Hello guys, this is Karthik from ExilAutomation.com and this is part 8 of our ALM with Team Foundation server with Dev and QA focused video series. And in this part we are going to talk about understanding and creating work items in Team Foundation server. And I have split this video into two parts, part A and part B, since this part will have more topics to understand. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 5 since this part will have some similarities from that part. So let's get started. What is work items? Well, work items is a work item. It's nothing big deal. But what is the meaning of it? Well, work item helps to plan and track a software development lifecycle. With work item, we can work track status and coordinate efforts within team. Some of the work items we can use for our projects are these. You can create bug, you can create task, you can create product backlog items, which is nothing but the requirements, and you can create epics, features, impediments, test cases, etc. And as you can see, the first three is out here, uh, which is nothing but the requirements, and uh, based on its requirement, you can create a task, and if there is any issues, then you create a bug for that. So these are the most important options up or work items. The other stuffs like epics, features, impediments, and test case are yet important, but still it is related to these items. So these items, these work items, we can create using this work item option. Well, how to create it? So work items can be created with either Team Foundation Server web application, which is something but TWA, or using Team Explorer of Visual Studio. So we can create these work items from there. So what are we going to create then? In this video, we will see how to create a product backlog items, which is nothing but the requirement of our whole application itself. And we are going to create a task for these product backlog items. So based on our requirement, we'll have a number of tasks. So these tasks will be splitted and will be assigned for that particular product backlog item. So we will be dealing on that as well. So these are the two items we're going to create in this video. So let's create them. All right, I'm back to my Visual Studio 2015 right now. And this is my Team Explorer. So I'm actually going to create the work item initially from our Team Explorer. And the next video, we will discuss about working with creation of these items from Team Foundation Server web applications. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select our project, which is nothing but our employee project. And here comes our project. And as you can see here, we have an option for work items. So if you select this item, you can see that this brings me up some new stuff here. And you can see that it has some kind of queries being stored. We'll deal about these queries in a few minutes. But as of now, just see that this is what the new work item stuff. So if you click this, you can see the one which we saw in the screenshot of our slide. You can create a bug, you can create a task, you can create a product backlog item as well. So what we're going to discuss in this video, we're going to create a product backlog item. So I'm going to click this. So you can see that our new product backlog item one field title can cannot be empty kind of stuff will appear here. And as you can see here, uh, this is our new product backlog item. So this is where our uh, requirements can be created. As you can see here, there are different kinds of options or maybe uh, properties available for this particular product backlog items. The first one is the title of the particular product backlog item. And you can also choose the iterations here. So it's sprint one, sprint two, or sprint three. So in which sprint you are, you can uh, select that and you can uh, add your product backlog item to that particular sprint. Of course, you can add this sprints in your team foundation server for web. And also you can add from I believe you can uh, you can modify that only from the Team Foundation Server web. Uh, so there you can modify the sprint uh, and also you can add the uh, new numbers of sprint items. 
and also you, you can see that there is a status here uh, like uh, you have this assign to options or where, to whom you can assign this particular uh, product backlog item and what is the state of it and you can see if I select this to assign to you can see there are different kinds of users coming in so these are the user who have access for this particular project in this particular default collections so you can see that I can see all these users coming in here and uh, you have a state here where you can create new or uh, before uh, creating a new product backlog item the state will always be new so once you save this product backlog item uh, once it is created you can see there are new states coming in and you can see in which area you're going to select and what is the reason for this product backlog item and what is the priority for this PBI and what is the first needed and what is the business value of it so let's create a new product backlog item here. So what I'm gonna give uh, a name here is like, uh, uh, the PBI is going to be something like, uh, create a more robust and user-friendly UI for employee application. Let's say this is going to be our first product backlog item and we're gonna create uh, this PBI uh, like, I want to enhance the UI of this particular application, something like that. So I'm going to assign this as print one and I'm going to assign this to my auto user and I'm going to uh, select this state as new, let it be, and the priority is one because that is pretty important for me right now. And the effort needed to first of all analyze it, maybe you can also make this as a analyze kind of uh, PBI or is this going to be a Dove PBI what what is that so you can also uh, give a uh, kind of tag here uh, is this going to be an analyze PBI or is it going to be Dove activity PBI or is a uh, PBI with uh, which has QA and of course those things you can also add as a uh, task as well so uh, maybe I'm just going to make this as analyze for now and then I'm going to keep the effort here and the effort is going to be like uh, 10 hours uh, just to analyze it and then the it's going to be for the business value and then I'm going to give a description here that this uh, PBI focusing on the UI of uh, application all right Maybe this is uh, fine for now. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to save this. So for saving this work item, you can click it here. So if I do this, all right. So it seems like the PBI is being saved in our Team Foundation server. And what happened here is, as you can see, that it has saved. And uh, let's say uh, I feel like uh, I want to add some more description here. So PBI focusing on the UI of application. Uh, as uh, this is going to be uh, more of a customer uh, centric something like this and uh, I want to make some kind of uh, enhancements here here and there uh, and something like this and uh, let's say if I want to add a screenshot you can add it here or if you want to change the background colors maybe uh, just kind of funny so I can do that if I want to, but uh, let this be. And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, I also think that the effort for, uh, for this particular PBI is 10 hours is too less. Maybe I have a, if I increase this to 15 hours and if I save it, uh, it will be saved. And you can see the whole history of whatever operation which I'm making here in this particular history tab. And you can see that the administrator uh, created this uh, maybe I can hide this so administrator created this PBI a minute ago and this will show all the uh, changes whichever I have made and you can see all the changes been coming up here which is great right and also if I made any other changes so I changed the foot from 10 to 15 and made uh, one other change less than a minute ago so what is that change you can click that and you can see that I have made this so it shows that the effort was 15 uh, which is a new value and the old value was 10 and the PBI on uh, the UI of the application uh, I've just added this uh, this one as the old new value so uh, it's just showing that as well and this is a new uh, one as well all right so it's just showing us the all the details which are we have added for our PBI and it has been completely tracked in here all right, so this is how you can create a new PBI for your, uh, for your project. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna create a new 
uh, work item of task. So this will add a new task for each and every PBI. So you can create a task for each and every PBI uh, based on your requirements. So you can create a task like this and you can uh, just do uh, an entry here. So uh, the task is going to be something like uh, maybe i can say like uh, it's going to be a dev activity so i'm going to say dev of creating a new ui for the application and then i'm going to assign this to a tfs user and it is going to be in to-do state and uh, the priority is pretty much heavy and it's going to take me around uh, maybe uh, 10 hours and then this activity is going to be a development activity and uh and I can, you can see that there is a new stuff here it's a development activity or what kind of activities it's a design development documentation requirement testing so everything is coming up here in our uh, activity state so you can tell what activity it is so it is development activity uh, it is not blocked yet uh, so the ui is going to be developed as more responsive uh, with ASP.NET uh, MVC or something like that. All right, so I'm just going to save this work item and it has been saved. And you can see that this work item is separately available and uh, the PBI which we created is also separately available. But we need to somehow link these two items so we need to bring this particular task under our pbi but as of now as you can see that this particular task is separately available it is not yet linked with anything else with any pbis so we'll talk about that maybe in the next video of this video series but as of now uh, just keep in mind that uh, this is how you create a task and that is how you create a pbi all right, so now our task and PBI has been created, but where can I see my task and PBI? Where are those things gone? I don't see this PBI or uh, the task which I created. How can I see them? Of course, you can see them with your web portal. So uh, if you just uh, open your web portal of your employee application, and uh, if you navigate to the web portal of the particular project, uh, you can see that uh, the uh, PBI and the task will be there but before going that how can I see it from here and that's where this new query option comes into picture so if you click this new query you can see that what you want to do for this particular project it just tells you what you're going to search for so if you're going to search for a work item of a type maybe I want to search for a task which we created and you can also search for uh, its state so what state it is uh, is it a new state or is it in progress or is it active removed requested whatever it is so let this be any here for now and if i run this query you can see that uh, it brings me up my task so if i open this you can see my task comes in similarly uh, if you uh, maybe if you just close this and uh, if you create one more query and if you search for your PBI, then you can select your PBI. And now if you run this, you can see that your PBI comes in. Right. And what you can do for your future use, maybe if you want to search this PBI every time, then you can also save this query and you can give it a name. So let's say PBI. And I want to search this in my, uh, save this in my uh, query. Or you want to save this into uh, your shared query where you want to uh, save this so if you share if you save this in a shared query then this particular uh, search will be available for all the users so what I'm going to do is as of now I'm going to store this in my query and if I save this you can see that in my query the PBI search comes in so now if I double click this you can see that all the PBIs just available for my project the employee project will be appeared so this is how you can create a queries for uh, your work items so you can create a uh, query for your pbi you can for a work items and all those things you can create from here so this is how you do this uh, queries so 
that's it guys this is how you can create uh, work items for a new product backlog item and a new task in the next video of this video series we'll talk about how to create a link item and also how to link the task into the pbis that you are creating and also we'll discuss about the uh, team foundation server web application access so that you can see how you can uh, create all of them more easily than compared to this visual studio ui so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day